Okay guys, so I just wanted to come to you today in another video and uh, share some thoughts that I had on some scriptures that I read out of the book of John. And so if you have your Bibles with you, you could go ahead and turn along. If not, I'm going to read it so you can just uh, follow along through the, through the video. But uh, we're reading out of John chapter 9, starting in verse 1. And it says this, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Verse 4, he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So this is the story of when Jesus healed the blind man in John chapter 9. Uh, this story is given to us of Jesus seeing the blind man on the side of the road. Uh, Jesus seeing this blind man, and he, he you know, as it says, he, he makes clay of the spit. He, he puts it on the man's face. He says, go wash it off, and when he did this man could see and and uh, you know this is I would say the first time uh, that he had seen because the disciples said that he was born blind and so this is the verses that I want to talk about of course we could go on and read throughout this story because you know it actually goes all the way to verse 41 the end of the chapter this whole chapter is dealing with this blind man receiving his sight you know, it goes on to talk about how the neighbors, the people who had known this man, they say, oh, is this not the man who uh, sit, you know, who, who would sit here and beg? He was a blind man. I mean, now he receives his sight. Is this not the one who would, you know, uh, you know, beg for money and all these things? And then the Pharisees, they come and they question him, and then his parents are involved. And, you know, it goes all throughout this chapter. But all I want to do is read until verse 7, because that's what... That's the message, that's where the message is that I want to share with you today through this video. Um, as you notice, the title of this video is Work While It's Still Light. And that comes from verse 4, uh, verse 4 and 5. The thing that I want to deal with uh, today in this video is the issue of time. Uh, and we may say, well, you got to be more specific. I'm, I'm talking about time in a person's life. Our lifespan as Christians in this world today. You know, the average, I think the average man lives to be about, you know, 70 to 80 years old. So we could look and say, oh, well, you know, that's about how much time you have here on this earth. But in all honesty, no man knows how much time they have here on this earth. Nobody knows if they're going to live to, you know, see another day. They don't know if they're going to, you know, nobody knows when they're going to die. So I believe the, que the answer to that question of how much time do we have left is unknown. I don't believe anybody truly knows how much time they have left. You know, there's been people who's been even diagnosed with sicknesses and they say, oh, you have, you know, six months to live and yet they live for another three years. Uh, or, you know, it could go the opposite way around. I mean, nobody truly knows when they're going to die or how much time they have left here on this earth. So the answer to that question is, is it's unknown. Nobody knows when they're going to die. Nobody knows how much time they have left. But the, I believe the better question is that we as Christians need to look at is what are we going to do with the time that we have? The question is not how much time do I have left, it's will I make wise use of the time that I have? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves today, and that's what I want to ask you through this video. Of course, you don't have to answer to me, you answer for yourself. Uh, you know, what are you going to do with the time that you've been given here on this earth? 
because truly nobody knows when they're gonna die. Nobody knows if they're gonna live to, you know, go on another preaching trip or if they're gonna, you know, be a part of this or go to church or be in this ministry. Nobody truly knows how much time they have left. So what are you gonna do with the time that you've been given? Because as we see here, this is how Jesus, I believe, this is when Jesus lived here on this earth. Um, this is how Jesus spent his time. When we talk about redeeming the time and people say, I want to be more like Jesus, well, let's look at his life and let's see the example that he set for us. Uh, it says that in verse 1, Jesus passed by a blind man, which was born from birth, and his disciples are looking and saying, you know, Lord, I mean, Master, who has sinned that this man would be born blind? I mean, it, it, has he done something wrong and this is your punishment for him? Or has his parents done something wrong and broken your law and so this is how you punish them? You give them a, a son that's been born blind? I mean, uh, what is the reason for this man being blind like this? Jesus simply answered and said, uh, he answers and says, you know, it's not that he has sinned, that he's blind. You know, this is not a punishment on his behalf. It's not that his uh, uh, parents have sinned, and so this is their punishment of giving them a son that's been born blind. But it says in verse 3, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I personally believe that this man was born blind just so that Jesus could heal him. Just so that Jesus could pass him by and do this work. And it's so funny that he goes on to say, I must work the works of him that sent me, is what it goes on to say. People, what is the example that we could get out of this right here? I believe that there is a blind man in everybody's life. In other words, there's a job for all of us to do. This man was specifically put here, born blind, lived probably the, the majority of his life being blind, just so that Jesus could come by and do the work that he was sent to do. You notice when John's disciples come to Jesus saying, you know, John is saying, is this the Messiah? Is this the Savior? Or do we look for another? What did he say? The blind receives, the, the blind receives sight. You know, the dead are being raised back to life. He said the, you know, what was it? The gospel is being preached. You can go back and see exactly what was said. But this was the work that he was sent to do. And so this man here was placed here so Jesus could do the work that he was sent to do. He was placed here so that Jesus could give this man his sight and perform this miracle so that people would believe. The question I want to ask you today is are you going to notice that blind man on the road in your life? Are you going to notice that job that God has sent you to do, whether it be popular or not, whether it's noticed or not? Will you acknowledge the fact that Jesus has placed you here to do a certain job? And you need to take pride in that and do it to the best of your ability. Are you going to notice these things? And then he goes on to say, in verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. You see, Jesus Christ was the man that came down and he was perfect. I mean, he had never sinned, although he was tempted of the devil. You know, in Matthew chapter 4, you can read about that. He was tempted of the devil, yet he did not give in. He did not sin. He didn't do anything wrong. He healed, the, he healed people. He made the lame walk, the blind see. You know, he, rose, he, he let the dead raise back to life, and then he died on the cross for us. This is who he was. I mean, Jesus was a man who, who you know, I got it written down right here. The Bible actually describes Jesus as a man that spoke with authority. He had authority out here on these streets that he taught in. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse, 21, uh, verse 29, he says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You see, this is who Jesus Christ was. He had that authority, that power in him. What is the definition of authority? It is the power or right to give orders and make decisions and enforce obedience. 
You see, this is who Jesus was. He taught with authority. Another account in Mark chapter 1, verse 22, it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. You see, there that word is again. Jesus had the right to give orders. Uh, Jesus had that power to make decisions. This is who Jesus Christ was. And not just even when he was an older man at 30 years old, but when he was 12 years old, the Bible says. And, and his parents had brought him down. Uh, you know, they, they, they had left. They were uh, going to the certain thing. And they had lost Jesus, you know, as the young 12-year-old kid. They were wondering where he's at. So they come back three days later to find him doing what? Teaching. He was teaching people. And they said, well, you know, why would you do this? I mean, you know, where were you? We were worried sick. I mean, you could imagine as his mother losing a child for three days. That for anybody, you would be a nervous wreck. You'd be worried sick. Where is your 12-year-old son at? You haven't seen him in three days. And what did he say? Well, he simply said that I'm about my father's business. I've ha I have a job to do. I'm here to do the work of him that sent me. This is who Jesus Christ was. So the powerful God, the mighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ walking this earth with you and me over 2,000 years ago, he was doing the work that he was sent to do. He recognized that blind man that was on the road. But even at that, he still had an end to his life. Even at that, at all that he had and he could have saved himself on that cross, he recognized that he had an end to his life. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. You see, I believe that Jesus knew, even though his time had not come, uh, even though he was still here on this earth doing the work, he realized that he doesn't have a lot of time left. Just like as we talked about in the beginning of this video, how much time do we have left? The answer is, is we don't know. Now, you don't know how much time you have left and neither do I. But I do know that it's limited. I do know that your life is but a vapor, according to what the Bible teaches. And Jesus knew that his time was coming. And he knew that there was to come a time when he was going to have to die on that cross. When Jesus was going to lay his life down for you and me. And at that point he would not be healing people. He would not be preaching to people. He would not be doing these things. He had a job to do. And he said, "As while it is day, while I'm here, and while there's time available, I'm going to do the work that I was sent to do. As long as I'm in this world, I'm the light of the world. Now that right there, guys... I believe is the perfect example of how we should be as Christians living our everyday life. I'm not saying just going out preaching on the street, holding a banner on the street corner. I'm saying everyday life in our ministry, in our work, in our everyday living to our families. This is who we ought to be. We ought to realize that our time is limited. We do not know when we're going to die. We do not know when our last day will be. So while we are in the world, we are going to shine the light and so that people will see that light and glorify God. We are going to do the work that we were sent to do. We are going to recognize that job that God has given us. And that job would be as like the blind man here. The blind man was here so that Jesus could heal him. Let me tell you, there are people in this world that are waiting for you to come along and help them, to show them the way. God has given you a job to do. And so the question is, is will you recognize that? Will you recognize that blind man on the side of the road in need of your help? In need of a touch from God? Will you recognize the job that God has set for us to do here on this earth? Will you shine that light as long as you are in this world? Will you say, as long as I'm here, I'm going to let people know. I'm going to shine my light and I'm going to do the best that I can do so that people will give God the glory. Will you do those things? Now, a lot of people would probably look and say, well, you know, it's impossible for us to do these things. It's impossible for us. Listen, <clears throat> the Bible says, let me, let me pull it up right here. 
Because a lot of people would be of the argument to look and say, well, that was Jesus. That was who Jesus was. But, you know, we're not Jesus and we don't have that power that Jesus has. And so it's hard for us to go out and do those things. And so, you know, a lot of people may argue that, but the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And here's the key. He says, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You see, Jesus Christ had authority and Jesus Christ had power while he was here on this earth. Jesus was doing the work that he was sent to do. And a lot of people would say, well, that was Jesus, but what about us? He says right here that all power is given to me, is what he says. But he says, lo, I am with you always. You see, if you're a Christian today, you have Jesus Christ in your life and that's all you need. That's all that matters. I mean, who can touch you? Who can do anything to you if you have a relationship with God? If you have that power of God inside of you, then you have that ability to go out and do what He has called you to do. And a lot of people may say, well, that, that doesn't, it's not necessarily the same. Having Him with you is not having the power. But He says this in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see right here he said very clear I've given you the power. I've given you the ability. I've given you that right to do these things. The question is, is are you going to do the work? Are you going to recognize that blind man on the side of the road? And that's the question, the final question I want to ask as we finish up this video. You know, the day is coming when we're not going to be able to work. In other words, the day is coming when we're going to take our last breath and we're going to stand before Jesus Christ. We're going to stand before the King of Kings in judgment. And He's going to say, what did you do with the talent, with the power, with the ability that I had given you? Did you recognize that blind man on the side of the road? Did you recognize that job that you were sent to do? Did you do it to the best of your ability? A lot of people try to push that blind man away a lot of times because it's not popular. Well, you don't get a lot of fame and you don't get a lot of glory and you don't get a lot of recognition doing that. That's not the key here today, guys. What, I, what I'm trying to say to you is simply this. Work while it's still light. You don't know how much time you have left or how much time you've, you've been given, but you do know that while you're here on this earth, God has given you power. God has given you authority and He's given you the right to go out and to proclaim His Word. He's given you the right to do the work that He has sent you to do. So why won't you do it? Guys, I hope this video has helped you out today. I hope it has uh, taught you something. It, is, it, it, it has showed me a lot. Uh, you know, it's just something that I've I read, the I don't know, a few days ago. and. I've been thinking a lot about it and looking up other scriptures to it and I feel like the evidence is definitely there that Jesus says, you know, look, how much, you know, we don't know how much time we've been given, but while we're here, let's do the work that we're supposed to do. Let's help the people that God has called us to help. Let's be a light to those that are in darkness. You know, let's shine that light. While we're in the world, we're the light of the world. We're shining that light to the world. Not so they would see us, not so that they would subscribe to us, so that they would follow us, so that they would praise us, but that they would see Him. Do the work that God has called you to do today. Recognize that blind man on the side of the road. In other words, that, that, that lost person, that person who's undone and in need of a Savior. Recognize these people out here today. And so in ending this video, I would also say to those of you who may be watching this video who don't have a relationship with God, to those of you who are the lost one, the one that is undone, what does this message say for you? Well, I believe it's very simple is that you don't know how much time you have left. 
You don't know how much time you've been given here on this earth. But while you're here, you could give your life to Jesus today. You could be forgiven of all the wrong that you've ever done. You could have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You could experience peace in your life for the first time. That's the work that you can do. It's calling on Him. He said confession is made by the mouth. Call on Jesus today and ask Jesus to come into your life before the night comes, before death comes, and you can't change anything that you've done. So I hope this video has helped you guys. I hope it has encouraged you to think about a few things as it has made me think about a lot of things. And so anyway, guys, uh, I hope to see you next time in another video. But uh, think about these things. And so until next time, God bless you.